ESSF。Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a, a really quick tutorial today. I don't want to make this a very long one,、um, so I'll do my best to make it as fast as possible.、Uh, I wanted to say the SPC 700 is a very noisy sound chip.、Um, Chipsynth SFC. Emulates it like perfectly, so it's going to have the noise as well.、Uh, I want to just load a, a quick example, really quick here in、um, in Cakewalk.、So、I'm just going to start an instance of Chipsynth SFC. And... Oh, I got the Japanese. <laughs>、um, we're working on a、uh, a couple guys, and I are, are working on、um, a Japanese skin for. SFC, so I'm, I'm just going to change that really quick. That'll get released pretty soon. We are just going over some of the some of the the formatting to make sure everything looks okay. Anyways, so let's get a longer string sample. For instance, I'll, I'll take one of the, the emu strings that comes with it. So we'll try mod two. So I really like that sound. That's um that's the same string that Final Fantasy VII used. Uh, but you'll notice that with Poly 8 set, which is technically eight SPC 700s running at the same time,、uh, there's no clicking, there's no noise. But when I work in Poly Timbrel mode, I like to set my Poly to one so that I can start using legato. But once you set it to one, can you hear the clicking in between the notes? It's very noisy. So. Um, my font's messed up. I gotta let's see if I reload it. There we go. So if I go to player and I I'm gonna play a Final Fantasy VI song really quick. I don't even know which one. Maybe we'll go with one.、Uh, spoiler. Let's go with the ending theme. So the ending theme has a, a drum roll at the beginning, and I'm gonna play that very slowly so you can hear it. We'll go at maybe twenty five percent of the speed. Well, close to maybe thirty percent. That's fine. So if you can notice the string, not they're not strings, the horns.、Um, so those are legatos in one inch,、uh, channel one and two. But if you hear the horns and the the low strings playing in four and five here. You can see how they blink before the next note plays, like right there. Let me play it slower. And we'll play another song really quick. So at this point, I'm just trying to find a song that. So you can see it right there. This is perfect. So the the timpani roll that starts at the beginning of the song. You'll see how it blinks like that. It's because the notes are cutting before the next notes play. So if you played them, like if you did a timpani roll coming in, and、uh, you had the note playing,、uh, so let's just load up a really quick note here. Let's imagine this is a timpani. I do have timpani sounds, but I I want to try to make this quick. So that timpani roll kind of looked something like this, and you can see. You can see the notes; they're not overlapping with each other, but they're not giving any time in between the notes to actually, like,、um, breathe. So let's imagine this is a timpani roll, and it's going from very low volume to high volume.、Um, if that were to play just like that timpani roll you heard, with all these notes the way they're configured, it would actually click in between them. So the way they got around that was they took all the notes. And they shortened them a bit between notes. So most of the musicians didn't do this by hand. Most of the sound drivers in the games actually did it automatically. So if you were if you were、uh, Minoru Akao, working on Nobuo Uematsu's music, and you were doing a timpani roll, what you would actually do is you would just put the regular notes in there. And then the the music system would automatically cut the notes so that you wouldn't have to do it for every single note.、Um, but what it serves is like instead of getting that clicky sound in between the notes, you actually get、uh, 
you actually get some good D clicks there. So let's uh, let's see if I can actually load up a quick example. This is great, actually. This is a good example right here. So this was another Final Fantasy II NES, well, Famicom rather, uh, example that I have. And this is great because it's got a timpani in it. So you can hear that I'm doing the same thing. And you can see the notes right there. The notes are stopping before the next notes play. So Chipsynth SFC doesn't do it automatically. C700 does do it. But uh, SFC doesn't do it because it leaves it up to you. Like it, its sole purpose is to be as accurate as possible. It's not going to do you any favors. Like you have to be, you have to be the Super Nintendo musician here, right? So if you want to be authentic with how the old SNES sound used to sound, then what you do is, uh, well, Cakewalk actually has a uh, a script that you can get. It's called. Um, minus tick yeah minus tick so what you would do is highlight all of the notes in the entire sequence and then just do a minus tick maybe two or three times and then you get this because these notes i didn't input them like this <laughs> that would take way too long i put the notes in normally and um i use that script to cut the notes off in any sequencer that you're using you should be able to highlight all the notes and then just drag them a little bit uh, shorter. If you have snapping on like like I do for this one, it might be a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, that's that's one thing you can do to to fix the clicking. Let's just take this for instance, and let's quantize this just to hear the clicking. I'll quantize it to a thirty second triplet note. So all those modifications I made are gone. See the notes are going right to the end of the of the space before the next note starts. So if I play this timpani right now, it's going to be clicky as heck. Let's try it out. So you can hear that. It's very clicky. See? But if I undo that, you'll see that the note the gaps are in between. If I play that again, so it kind of makes it sound more of like a machine gun, but it also stops the click. In fact, I could actually argue that the old Squaresoft Final Fantasy sound, that was a huge part of it. Nobuo Uematsu even did that in Final Fantasy VII, actually. A lot of the Final Fantasy VII snares, snare rolls and everything on the PlayStation 1, um, keeping in mind that the PlayStation 1 sound chip, um, in layman's terms, is pretty much a supercharged Super Nintendo sound chip with higher uh, frequency response and um, and uh, other things. It's it's noisy though, so the way they got around it was using this technique. The uh, um, That's pretty much what you'd wanna do for most of the, the song though. And it does give it that distinct sound. Like if you have notes playing until the end of the range, until the next note plays, that actually, and I hate to say it, but sometimes it actually makes the song sound a little unprofessional. But if you're going for that Super Nintendo sound, that is something you definitely want to do. Um, and even in C700, even though C700 does de-clicking automatically, uh, it, I don't exactly know how many ticks it automatically takes off, but I still do this technique with C700 as well because as many as ticks as it takes off, it's not enough. So it, it is definitely something that you'll wanna do if, if you're trying to go for that authentic sound. And um, the other thing that would make a lot of noise in, in uh, SNES music is, let me load up something really quick. Um, so for Hiroki Kikuda's music that I remade for him, um, I'll see if I can find it. Okay, so here I have Hiroki Kikuda's uh, song, The Unbreakable Unity that I remade for him to play off of real hardware. Um, I'm doing kind of a special effect with the with the, the echo. I'm actually doing a ping pong panning effect. And if you listen very carefully, you can hear the echo bouncing left and right. But if you also listen very carefully, you can hear that the echo is clicking.
So you can, this is C700 because um, when I made this, uh, Chipsynth SFC didn't exist, but um, it's the same thing. So basically with the Chipsynth SFC or C700 or, or any authentic Super Nintendo plugin, it's going to click if you're doing crazy quick volume changes like that. Even, even with the regular volume, not just the echo, but the, the regular volume on any channel, if you're doing crazy quick volume changes, you're gonna click. So the best thing to do in this case, um, I'm clicking here, but actually I, I gotta thank Ikari for this because when he actually modified the C700 driver, he made these ramp automatically in the code so I didn't have to go drawing them in. But basically what you would do to fix it, let's shut off my quantize or my snapping for a second. What you do to fix it is you'd actually draw You'd actually draw like kind of a, a ramp like this. So instead of it just jumping back and forth to values really quickly causing clicks, it's actually going to quickly speed to the next uh, value. And when it does that, it's, uh, it's ramping it so that it doesn't click. Like it's, it's kind of like a, a technique that they used to use back in the day called... Um, Oh, I don't even, I think it's just called volume ramping, to be honest. Impulse Tracker used to use that uh, as a de-click method. Jeffrey Lim set that up when he, he added MMX support to Impulse Tracker. Anyways, so those are a couple de-click methods. I might do another tutorial in the future explaining how it works. But if you have any questions about this, let me know. Um, and next time you're listening to an SPC, play it back very slowly. And just listen to the notes and hear how, hear them, like see if they stop before the next note plays. It's really interesting because this is something that I actually noticed like back in the early 2000s before SPC players even existed. Um, actually, not even 2000s. I think it was the late 90s when I was listening to Final Fantasy IV and found Final Fantasy VI soundtracks. Anyways, going to cut it off. Again, if you like this uh, content, leave me a like. It helps me out. If you want to subscribe, that's totally up to you. I'm okay with it. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I very much appreciate all of you. Um, and we got more tutorials coming really soon. I, I want to show you guys how to make Super Nintendo samples. And I want to show you guys how to make, uh, make things in the steps menu in the matrix. Because that's where the, the heart of a lot of effects happen. Once I'm done doing all that, I'm going to show you guys how to make sound effects too. Okay, well, we're going to call it. So... We'll see you later, and again, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.